Okay, in this never-ending saga, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna shut the system off. And this time, instead of using the OS UDT2, we are going to use the factory set. So it's the fourth item on the Microsoft uh, download site. Plug this sucker in. It's very similar to the other thing. Um, we gotta hold down the bind and eject and wait for some sounds. Here we go. Oh, you listen. One more time. Let this go for give a full ten seconds here. So we'll over hit the power. That's one, two. Okay, so that's a factory reset. Um, uh, power back off again. Wait, okay, wait, it's coming back up. It's a little weird. Uh, loaded for about five seconds there, and then it cut off. So. Now, factory reset, I think uh, what that does exactly, I don't, it deletes all the settings, I guess. So preparing the console, so from what I understand, it actually repartitions everything and kind of redoes everything. Um, so we'll see kind of what happens here. This is the part that's very frustrating to most people because it seems to be kind of hit or miss as to what works in what order. But the goal here, of course, <laughs> is to boot without an E200-100 error. Kind of goes without saying, but keep trying until you get there, I guess. But there we go. All right, there we go. Not exactly the typical order of doing things, but it works. Okay, so I got to say I've never done that before. Um, E203, never seen it. Um, have we used the flash drive to, to boot? I'm actually going to probably shut it off before I do the actual configuration, but this is using the, um, the system reset downloaded from Microsoft site. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. I'll show it off though and bring it back up again one more time. I, uh, I do have a controller here that I synced earlier, but let's see. I actually got to resync it. I think I just do that. I think I actually synced it with the other Xbox. So we're going to hit the bind button and we'll hit the sync button here. And there. Okay. So now wants us to hit A. But before I finish a config, um, I'm gonna shut it off and I'll boot it up one more time. I just wanna make sure it boots up cleanly just with all the problems we've had. So let's shut it off and we'll try again. See if we get, you know, two clean boots here in a row. <laughs> I figured that'd be more telling. I'll come back if there's some more of an issue. I don't wanna go through the whole setup process with you, but. I just kind of wanted to see you get to the setup process, but I'll do at least the first couple steps just so you can kind of see it. Okay, so this time I'm going to actually turn it on with a controller. Can we see it? Power button. Kind of see everything here in one shot. There's the system. Here we get the preparing console. Uh, what I'll probably do is uh, go through everywhere except for adding the account and then I'll kind of add the account off camera and then I'll just show you the dashboard. I'll boot it up. Now what I usually do 
is um, because this is essentially a, a brand new system at this point. No, no accounts are on it. There's no files on it. Um, I usually just add my own account. Uh, I can go as far as actually trying to download a game and play a game. We'll see. I, I, I might do that. Um, it's usually not a bad idea because you can at least make sure the system's still reading disks, that kind of thing, just to make sure the, uh, the user doesn't have other problems. Though having to fix a Blu-ray drive would not be fun in these systems, but here we go. So we'll do English. There. Okay. Now yeah, we connected. Okay. So not using the wireless. Where do I live? United States. This is funny because it should just blow right through this. It may not, but we'll see. If it does do an update, that's be interesting because that means the OSUDT2 is actually older than the current update that's released, which uh, which kind of sucks. But I'm not quite sure. There we go. We don't need to update. All right, that's what I expected. Uh, that means the OSUDT2 was actually up to date and as new as the current release. Why I say that sucks is if uh, if it did need to do an update and the OSUDT2 was older and you had a hard drive fail, it's more difficult to fix because you don't have the proper updates. You don't have a matching update. Usually, you can always fix an Xbox One as long as the uh, the update is newer. When it's older, that's a problem. But Hopefully you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so I'm on the East Coast. Oh, yeah, I do want to mention the power options too. It's up to you which you'd rather do the energy saving or the instant on. Um, the argument for the instant on is that uh, it can do updates in the background and you can uh, use a connect and just tell it to turn on, it'll turn on. Uh, I would never recommend doing that. And the reason being, um, one is a little more risk uh, because with the energy savings, um, it means that when you power it off, it really powers off, so it won't automatically update in the background, which means that when you need to update, you'll power it on and it'll ask you to update. Um, so you kind of control more when it updates in that way, whereas instant on, it just updates whenever it wants to. So again, I'm not sure why these things fail and people give them to me, but my guess would be, you know, they may be updating at odd times. Um, or you weren't aware they were updating and you accidentally shut it off or maybe it was a power outage I, I don't know, but I do like the energy saving better The other nice thing about that is whenever you actually shut down your Xbox, you know, it's actually off which is uh, which is a nice thing too. It saves power All right. Anyway, so this is where we would load the account. I'm not gonna do that on camera uh, But we're in pretty good shape honestly, so I'll just bring it back when we get back to the um dashboard here so I'll add my account and we'll come back